Hey guys, what is cracking? It's Crack Nation here coming at you guys with the next installment of our what you guys can be catching in your playthrough of Brilliant Diamond or Shining Pearl. What Pokemon you guys should be catching along the way that will be the most helpful for beating the game, beating the gyms, beating the Elite Four, getting through the storyline, but also then transitioning into Pokemon that you can use right away in competitive format and in a competitive format and find you know viability find some success there as well pokemon they're going to be excelling at both roles so if you guys haven't watched the first installment of this series i definitely recommend going and checking that out where we covered the first few pokemon we're going to be doing a few different videos you know talking about every single pokemon a little bit more in depth uh so I definitely recommend starting out with that video, but if you don't have time for that or you need a quick refresher about what we're looking for in the Pokemon, I'm going to do a quick recap, recap of the criteria. So first up, we're going to be looking for Pokemon that are viable in both the main story and high-level competitive play. Like I talked about, that could be in the, on Showdown, that could be in-game on Wi-Fi battles. There's going to be Pokemon that you know have really effective use in the game when you're beating the gym leaders, when you're trying to take on the Elite Four, take on the champion, trying to play through the uh, game, trying to take on Team Galactic or whatever it is. Uh, there's going to be Pokemon that are useful in in both regards and importantly I think here is also the Pokemon that are easily attainable so that means no training or no events so that means Pokemon that you need to trade to get so that's things like Alakazam or Gengar for example uh, might be very competitively viable Pokemon that you would love to have but they're hard to do and I think a lot of people you know when they're playing through these games I know myself I don't really have time to work out trades and whatnot I, I just want to get stick with the action and keep playing and catch and do everything myself a lot so we're just have a Pokemon that you don't need to trade for you also don't need events so certain moves and Pokemon are only available by event so we're not going to be covering those pokemon obviously uh this also applies to things like breeding as well i should mention here so i'm not going to be talking about any moves or pokemon that you can only acquire by specific breeding patterns so if there's a lot of pokemon that i go touch on that you know i may have skipped an important move and the reason for that is because those are moves that you need either uh to pass from a previous generation so you need to transfer the pokemon from a previous generation or maybe you need to breed those moves into that pokemon uh, something complicated like that again those are th things that you know are very useful to making the most competitive viable team but are not really realistic for somebody you know a casual player just playing the storyline that maybe wants to dabble in competitive play afterwards so again i'm gonna be looking for pokemon that you know you can pick up along the way and you can teach them the moves along the way without stressing too much about trying to get everything perfect and then you can then transition into competitive play and if you want to go that next step that's up to you without further ado let's take a look at the first pokemon we've got up and that is going to be azumarill azumarill is a really long time uh popular pokemon always been a pretty good one in competitive and that's for the main reason the huge power ability first up we're going to talk about where you can catch it you can catch meryl in a few different places in the game route 212 215 and the trophy garden are going to be places where you can catch meryl really importantly though you need to get a plus attack nature if you're going to catch your Azum or meryl to make it as effective as possible and really importantly you have to make sure you catch one with huge power uh so you need to make sure your azumarill has huge power if it doesn't you're going to be in a really so it's a really bad pokemon honestly it is not a good pokemon so huge power will really boost this thing into viability and you're going to want to obviously try to ev train a little bit into attack as much as you can in an average playthrough um so with plus attack nature that's going to be something like an adamant nature for example would be the perfect nature uh that's going to be what you're really looking for and then if you can boost up with huge power that's going to be the ideal azumarill uh now azumarill's move pool is not the deepest you know you're not running you're going to have a whole lot in your average playthrough that you're going to be able to access but you can get things like play rough ice punch liquidation super Superpower. Other options include something like Waterfall, maybe, but these are moves that are going to be really, really powerful. Obviously, your stabs with Play Rough and Liquidation are going to be insanely hard hitting with huge power buffs. Ice Punch to hit those grass types that try to come into you, and Superpower to hit steel types that try to come into your fairy moves and for some general coverage. That fighting type is always good. That's going to be, I think, your best set. And I know I realize I only listed four moves here. That's a little tough because that's literally only exactly four moves, but these are the best moves that your Azumar will be able to run in competitive play. Things like Aqua Jet and Belly Drum are a little harder to get. They're only available through breeding and transfer. So you're going to have a little bit of a hard time getting those moves that are really popular on Azumar in competitive formats but i think in your average playthrough this move set should suffice quite nicely so i think that should be what you're looking for with your azumarill taking a look at what's up next we're going to take a look at the queen of ou for the longest time this pokemon that's been everywhere another fairy type and that's going to be clefable clefable is massively versatile it, last time we saw it in uh, the Sinnoh region it was a normal type now it's a fairy type which did not exist last time so that's going to make it i think a standout for your team in the playthrough but also 
instantly one of the best competitive Pokemon we've ever seen. Constantly has a presence. That's thanks to really, really solid bulk with great versatility in roles. Can do a lot of different things for a lot of different teams. And just really solid bulk paired with a great defensive typing in Pure Fairy. Uh, the best place to catch this are going to be Mount Coronet, but also the Trophy Garden might help you out to catch this thing as early as possible. You're going to want to look for that Clefable, oh, sorry, Clefairy, and then evolve it with a Moonstone. The best natures in general are either going to be plus special attack, plus defense, or plus special defense natures. In general, you want to either increase your defensive stats or you want to boost your special attack and go with a more offensive variant. Now, this is where things get a little choppy, guys, because you're going to need to decide how you want to use this Clefable. If you're trying to use it in game, usually an offensive Clefable will be your best bet, but in competitive formats, more defensive variants tend to find success. So that's going to be up to you which way you want to lean. But because of that, there's a lot of different viable moves that I have got to go over. So Moonlight is obviously going to be your best recovery option on your average playthrough. Um, just for you know that reliable recovery move. Calm Mind is going to be terrific on Clefable for a lot of defensive and offensive sets. You can also run Cosmic Power instead if you wanted to go pure defense. Um, and then you've got a lot of coverage moves, man. Obviously, Moonblast, I think, is the most important one to run on your Clefable to try to catch uh, those Pokemon with powerful stab fairy attacks. But then after that, you've got, you know, you pick your coverage. So let's say your team needs uh, extra fire type attacks. You could easily run Flamethrower. You could also run Fire Blast. You could run Thunderbolt or Thunder. You could run Ice Beam or Blizzard. Psychic, Psy Shock, you know, you name it, this Pokemon's got it. It's got Earth Power. It's got Focus Blast. Like, it's just got absolutely everything. Grass Knot. You, you pick the coverage. I think the most important moves that you need to run are probably Moonlight and Moonblast. Uh, and then Calm Mind is pretty good too. Not necessary. Not even that. It also gets Stealth Rocks. You can go with like a utility. You could run Heal Bell. You can take it a more utility route. So there's a lot of different ways to access Clefable and use it effectively as part of a team. And I think the best way for your average team will probably be uh, a more offensive set. So I might do something like a Moonlight, Calm Mind, Moonblast, and like... I don't know, Flamethrower would be really good to hit Steel types, for example. Or you could opt out of going for Moonlight, maybe, or Calm Mind, and just put in a third attack, maybe an Ice Beam or a Focus Blaster, another extra attack. Those will be the variants that I think will find the most success for you guys in-game. Uh, and then when you switch to competitive play, they'll still be pretty good. So that would be my suggestion there. But Clefable, obviously, Pokemon that goes in a lot of different directions. So you're going to need to think a little bit about what you want to do with it. Taking a look at our next Pokemon up, this is going to be Garchomp. If you've been a follower of the channel for a little while, you know that Garchomp is one of my absolute favorite Pokemon. I love this thing. It's been a favorite of mine for a really long time. And that's for uh, the reason that it is an absolute competitive and in-game beast. This thing is a pseudo-legendary, but actually you can catch it shockingly early. And that is something that most people don't realize about Garchomp is you can catch it super, super duper early in the game. How do you do that, you may ask? Well, First up, you're going to need to go to the Wayward Cave, which is underneath the bike path, but you're not going to want to go through the main entrance that most people are familiar with to the Wayward Cave. There's actually, in Pokemon Platinum at least, there's a secret entrance. So hopefully they maintain this in Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl. There's a secret entrance under the bike path. And if you go in there, uh, you may need Rock Smash, Strength, stuff like that. But if you go under there, that is the only place in the game you can catch Gibble that early. You can catch Gibbite on uh, Victory Road later on down the road and whatnot, but you can catch Gibble really, really early in this game, actually, which is super awesome. You know, I think probably around the fifth or sixth gym, you can catch that Gibble, and all of a sudden, you've got a beastly Garchomp ready to go by the final gym leader or something. That could be monstrous by the Elite Four. Uh, so I love Garchomp. I always like that you could catch it so early. I think a lot of people might not know that you can catch it that early there, because uh, that cave is a secret entrance. You know, it's it's not actually super visible, so you got to go kind of looking for it for a little bit so for natures i'd recommend a plus attack or a plus speed nature these tend to be garchomp's best attributes uh, i think plus speed is probably the best for competitive play but plus attacks pretty good for in-game where things aren't usually as quite as fast the meta is not quite as fast in game obviously um another pokemon with just a really wide variety of moves most importantly you're gonna need your garchomp to know earthquake but after that it's really up to you you've got a lot of different options you could go dragon claw you could even go outrage i think swords dance is another really really good one worth noting scale shot is a move that was interesting introduced in generation eight so i'm not sure if that's a move that's going to be maintained in the Sinnoh region but if it's it is if there is some way to learn it scale shot is absolutely terrific on garchomp and should be your go-to dragon move of choice you've got stealth rock for utility and it's got a wide variety of like weird coverage moves you could run like a uh, special moves honestly so flamethrower draco meteor is a cool option um poison jab is really good to hit fairy types so i think you got a lot of options here and i think it's really cool if you can catch a monstrously viable absolutely beastly pokemon that early in the game i absolutely love it you just got to be willing to put in the time with that gibble because that thing might suck a little bit at first uh but if you are willing to you're going to end up with just maybe the best pokemon for your playthrough and competitive pokemon at least out of the center region quite possibly 
Uh, taking a look at what's up next, I want to talk about Snorlax. This is a Gen 1 stable, but you can catch it anywhere in the Sinnoh region with a Honey Tree by catching a Munchlax and then evolving it uh, with high friendship. So obviously you're going to want a plus attack or a plus special defense nature. That's because Snorlax is a tanky, tanky dude with a high attack stat. So those are the stats you're going to want to be boosting. Uh, and it's got a lot of different viable moves. I think Hammer Arm, Belly Drum, they're both really good crunch unfortunately you're kind of lacking a normal coverage with the absence of return so body slam will be your go-to uh stab move but it's a pretty good move because you got that paralyzed chance you got all your choice of the punches which is really sick earthquake for coverage to hit those steel types uh heavy slam to hit things really hard because you're so heavy seed bomb it's got a lot of cool coverage options i think it also gets like shadow claw or something if you wanted that um but crunch is there so you've got a lot of cool options belly drum is awesome because you can get that setup access if you wanted it but again i might not necessarily go for belly drum because you are so slow by the time you're firing off those powerful attacks you're gonna have a tough time and Snorlax doesn't get very reliable recovery but you can catch it anywhere with a honey tree by catching a munchlax so that's pretty awesome that you can catch it pretty early in the game and Snorlax is definitely a beastly pokemon that has seen a lot of success in competitive formats and will quickly translate to success in that format um, the last Pokemon I want to be talking about today with you guys is going to be Weavile. Weavile, obviously Sneasel has been around, not necessarily in Gen 4, but Weavile was introduced in Gen 4 in the center region. Uh, and it has been a mainstay in competitive Pokemon for its really, really effective offensive typing, especially being a really good knockoff user, but then having priority, having strong ice attacks, which are obviously offensively devastating, but then also being really fast while it's doing it is huge. Um, you've got a few different places you can catch it. Snow Point Temple is not really available to you that early in the game, but and just in general, you're going to be catching this Pokemon a little bit later. If that's okay, uh, it's got a, a few different places you can catch it, usually up in the north, uh, Route 216, Route 217, and Acuity Lakefront. Um, best natures, similar to Garchomp, plus attack, plus speed, are going to be your most best options. Uh, in general, there's a lot of different moves, but they kind of all end up accomplishing the same thing. Unfortunately, Weavile is arguably the best knockoff user in the game of Pokemon, but it does not get knockoff that easily you have to bring it in from either breeding or previous generations and that's kind of a pain so unfortunately your best option for dark moves will have to be throat chop but you've still got night slash which is pretty cool too and then you've got triple axle that makes it out of gen 8 into out of the uh sword and shield games and into this game somehow the way to teach it triple axle is awesome ice shard obviously really good but there's also other like ice punch i guess would be your best option outside of those two uh brick break another coverage move it also gets low kick if you were thinking about that and then x scissor is also pretty good to hit opposing dark types for example uh, all really really good options and weavile is a pokemon that's seen a lot of success in competitive play so i think this is another one that could definitely be a great fit on both a in-game team but also a competitive team let me know what you guys think. Let me know Pokemon you guys are excited to try. If you guys think there's some Pokemon maybe I missed so far on this list, definitely let me know. Uh, I'll gonna keep adding to this so there's gonna be another video at least one more video coming out but uh if you guys have pokemon you definitely want to see and how you think you should be using it and you think you want to make a case for it, definitely do so in the comment section below if you like this video leave a like subscribe dude if i'm always extremely appreciative of all the support we've been getting on this channel i'm hoping to bring it back from the dead a little bit so i've been really excited about doing that until next time i will see all of you guys later kraken nation out